We're going to go sort of step by step through luminous sequencing. The idea here is we're going to go ahead and do whole cell or whole tissue RNA sequencing. So we're going to purify RNA from a tissue, messenger RNA in particular. So the messenger RNA has poly A tails. Um, and so we are going to have either we'll find a way to remove those poly A tails or we'll, um, or we'll end up with um, uh, some sequences that just read A, 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 or whatever. But we're interested in the rest of the sequences here. Um, and so let's imagine that we've got a whole bunch of different RNAs from a cell. So we've got, let's say, oh, this is a brand new marker that is dead. We've got um, a bunch of RNAs. And so this is the mRNA for, um, this is the mRNA for uh, um, phosphofructokinase. Um, and then also in our batch of mRNAs is the mRNA for, um, mRNA for uh, uh, sodium potassium ATPase. Um, and so then the first thing that we're going to do is with our mRNAs, we need to convert them into cDNA. And so to do that, we use an enzyme called um, reverse transcriptase. And so I'm going to imagine here, I'm going to simplify way down. We're going to imagine that the sodium potassium ATPase has a sequence that's just like a few bases long. Its sequence is A U G C C A. U, A, A. That's the whole sequence for our sodium potassium ATPase. Single-stranded RNA. Um, and then this mRNA as well, it has some long sequence. I don't know how, uh, we'll, we'll say that this one is um, uh, um, a thousand bases long, so I'm not going to write out all thousand bases. Um, this one, of course, is also longer, but we're just going to um, illustrate with that. Um, and actually, let's say, um, just for fun, let's say that there are two copies of the phosphofructokinase mRNA in our cell and one copy uh, in our sample and one copy of the sodium potassium ATPs. Really, there's going to be, you know, maybe 10,000 to 20,000 copies or whatever. But we're going to kind of simplify things in. Okay, so making cDNA. So what's going to happen with this cDNA uh, uh, process of making cDNA? separate a bit more. We have two copies of single-stranded RNA, one copy of that. Our enzyme reverse transcriptase, um, three prime, five prime, so these are just two copies of the same thing. Um, our enzyme reverse transcriptase comes along and it will first make a complementary DNA strand, like its name suggests. So we're going to get um, T, T, a, um, T, G, G, C, A, T. So that's the complementary strand that's made, five prime end, three prime end. Um, and then it also comes along and it makes um, whatever the complementary strand of this is, and then it also makes over here whatever the complementary strand of this thousand base long business is. Then, our reverse transcriptase eats up and gets rid of that strand of RNA that was there. So now what we have is single-stranded DNA. Um, and it's single-stranded DNA that complements the sequence of what our mRNA was. But then, the reverse transcriptase goes and makes our DNA double-stranded. So what that means is here, it is now going to add an A opposite the T, a T opposite the A, a G, a C, another C, another A, um, another T, another A, another A, there's our three prime in, there's our five prime in, boom, double-stranded DNA for our sodium potassium ATPase, and then also converts this into double-stranded DNA as well. Complements back. So now we first built the complement of the RNA, then we built the complement of the complement of the RNA, now we've got double-stranded DNA. 
All right. Then um, we're going to come in and fragment our DNA. So we're just going to shake it up. This thing is so short that we're probably not going to break it. So this thing just gets left alone. But maybe this double-stranded fragment here breaks here. And actually, we're going to have two pieces. But let's imagine that this piece floats away and doesn't get, um, and doesn't get um, involved in anything else. So we've got a piece here. Um, actually, yeah, we've got a piece that kind of gets cut. Uh, let's cut this one like way down to here. And so we've got now 5' prime and 3' prime in a shorter double-stranded DNA that is just 300 bases long. And then meanwhile, this one that we've got here breaks here, and it breaks here. And so, and then the, red, the other pieces, maybe they float away, maybe they get sequenced somewhere else, who knows. Um, there ends up being, there's a little bit of overlap between our two fragments, um, but um, what we've got now is um, a 250 base long fragment from uh, a different copy of our PFK phosphor fructose gene. So these are, let's just imagine that these are the three RNAs that we've got. There's really going to be many, many thousands of RNAs. All right, so we've got here our uh, sodium potassium ATPase, um, and we've got our RNAs ready, uh, sorry, our cDNAs ready, and now we are going to add alumina adapters. And I'm going to cheat and look up the alumina adapters that I did before because um, otherwise I'm going to again get myself confused. All right, so what we've got is we're going to add on one side one adapter. And the adapter, let me just use the same sequence I used before because otherwise I'm never going to keep track of it. Um, it could be anything, and this is just a made up sequence, but let's say C, T, A, A, C, and then there's our three prime end. And then the other strand, the anti parallel strand of this adapter, uh, is going to have a G, T, T, A, G, G. And that same adapter gets added on to um, the ends of these sequences. So we got C, C, T, A, A, C, three prime, um, and then G, T, T, A, G, G, on the five prime. And then same thing over here. C, C, T, A, A, C, prime in, and then um, G, T, T, A, G, G. And then we have a different adapter that is going to get added onto the other side. And unfortunately, these things are going to run into each other a bit here on the board, but we'll live with it. All right, so on this side, I'm going to use purple, um, and we have um, a, C, T, A, A, A. There's the five prime end. And then over here, we've got T, G, A, T, T, T. All right. And then, um, our adapter. T, G, A, T, 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 A, 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 T, C, A. Um, and I've run myself out of space, but we'll kind of just go down this way. Um, and so here's the three prime in. So we've got um, T, G, A, T, T, T. And then over here, A, 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 T, C, A. Okay, so there's of course many, many, many more kinds of RNA, many, many more RNAs here because the cell started with a whole bunch of these, um, but we're just going to pretend for the rest of this time like these are the only three RNAs that we've got. 
And so now, let's do some Illumina sequencing. And I'm going to get this right. I really, really am going to get this right. OK, so anchored at the 5 prime end are some blue adapters covalently attached to, so this black line is the surface of our Illumina chip, and covalently attached, anchored at the 5 prime end, are some adapters. So this one's going to read GTT, A, um, G, G. So this is the 3 prime end of that. GTT, A, G, G. There's the 3 prime end of that. And then um, let's imagine that there's some space here so that these things are physically separated and a couple more copies of our blue adapter. Um, still anchored at the five prime end. Anchored at the five prime end. G, T, T, A, G, G, three prime. G, T, T, a, G, G. Um, and this is not the whole sequence, of course. Uh, as a reminder, these adapters are um, hundreds of base pairs long themselves. But we're just going to be sort of illustrating what's going on. And then, also anchored on our chip at its 5 prime end will be the purple adapter. And so that sequence reads at the 5 prime end A, 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 T, C, A. All right. Anchored here at the 5 prime end A, 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 T, C, A. There's the 3 prime. And then do, 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 A, 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 T, C, A. 3 prime end, and then A, 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 T, C, A. 3 prime end. Alright, so our top strand is going to land somewhere over here. And the thing that will, uh, that will anneal from our top strand is the blue prime is the blue uh, side. So I'm going to stop drawing the lines here to go with it, but we've got C, A, A. This is the three prime end here. C, A, A. T, C, C. Then the sequence continues on with the genomic DNA. A, A, T, A, C, C, G, T, A. Okay, right. And then, um, and then uh, we've got going into the purple. Uh, it's not really color coded. Keep reminding you that it's not really color coded. But now we're into the purple sequence. A A A. Cool. Okay. And then meanwhile, the bottom strand comes over here. Again, I'm not going to draw the line, but I'll just draw the bases. So here's our 5 prime end, 3 prime end, oops, this is, yeah, this, sorry, this is our 5 prime end up here. So here's our 3 prime end, a 3 prime end reads T, 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 A, G, T. Then we get into the mRNA sequence for our sodium potassium pump, which in this direction goes T, A, C, G, G, T, A, T, T. And then we get into the other side of our adapter, which reads G, G, A, T, T, G. And now we're at the five prime of our chip. Now, this is not covalently attached to the chip. This is just hydrogen bonded across the adapter sequences. Now, we bring in polymerase, and we're going to copy the complement of what has attached. So what that means is we're going to, over here, pair 
This, it's T with an A, T, G, C, C. Now we're not sequencing it, we're just copying. A, T, A, A, C, C, oops, let me get my color straight. C, C, T, A, A, C. And then over here, same thing, we're going to copy the complement of what's there, which is the opposite of the complement of what's on the other side. But yeah, so we have T, T, A, T, G, G, C, A, T, T, G, A, T, T, T. Three prime end. Okay, next we denature. So what that means is that our non-hydrogen bonded strand, the thing that was the um, C DNA that we started with, that's just, sorry, non-covalently attached one, that just floats away, it wasn't attached to this end to begin with, so it's just gone, floated away. Um, same thing with this one, this bit of C DNA plus the adapters that we had on it, just floats away, we're never going to see it again, washes into the garbage. But now, covalently attached, we've got these two sequences. Now this is going to flip, flop, and uh, you know, dance around, um, and eventually what's going to happen is this, T, this three prime T, 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 A, G, T will eventually flop over until it has connected with this. So it kind of flops over like this, it hydrogen bonds to this, and so then what we've got, I guess I will put it back in my line. So we've got a sort of black stretch and purple stretch. So what we've got then is this flops over, and kind of does this little loop-de-loop -loop thing here like this. So there's the part that complements the, the purple. And then up here on this, um, what we've got in terms of sequence is, um, uh, is, let's see, what do we have here in terms of sequence? Is T, T, A, T, G, G, C, A, T. And then same thing happens on this thing. It kind of flips and flops and floops around until the blue bit lines up down over here. C, A, A, T, C, C. There's the three prime end. Um, and then the rest of this has sort of flopped around and over like this. So we've got A, T, G, C, C, A, T, A, A. Then, now we do bridge amplification, which is essentially just doing another PCR. So what's going to happen then is we're going to match up Coming off of this blue adapter here, we're going to match up onto this sequence. So what we get is, it's going to sort of bridge around like this, but so what we get is a um, T, T, A, T, G, G, C, A, T, and then um, it's going to continue on to give us a T, G, A, T, T, T. Three prime in. Um, meanwhile, over here, we do the same thing. We complement, so we get an A, T, G, uh, C, C, A, T, A, A, and then we're into the blue, C, C, T, A, A, G. Okay, so now we've got 
double-stranded DNA anchored at each 5' prime end, then we denature it. And so when we denature it, what happens is it all just linearizes out. And so the 5' prime ends stay anchored, but you sort of imagine this strand unfolding up this way, this strand unfolding up this way. So let me draw what that's going to look like. So the, when I'm erasing here, I'm erasing because they're moving, not because things go float away. Things are not floating away. They're all, each strand is anchored at the five prime end. So it's not that things are washing away now. Instead, these things are just straightening out because we're breaking the double strands. And so if we're careful with what we did as we do this, what we will get is side by side, two molecules going straight up. This one, anchored at the five prime blue end, starts with the blue sequence and then continues on T, T, A, T, G, G, C, A, T, and then continues on into our purple adapter, T, G, A, T, 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 there's the three prime end of that. Meanwhile, this one is anchored at the purple adapter. And so it doesn't actually have the complementary sequence. It's got sort of, well, we'll just sort of see. So, so these things are not hydrogen bonded. They're just separated from each other. But then this one has, after this A, it has an A, T, G. So we're just reading along what was there before. And if we kept track of everything, this should be what we get. You can do this if you want with strings and verify for yourself with strings that this really all works. Um, but what's going to be coming out here is then we've got a C, C, T, A, A, C, three prime end. And then meanwhile, I erased it before, but those strands didn't float away. They just straightened out. So let's draw them straightened out. So um, over here, covalently attached, one strand reads the black, the cDNA sequence, A, T, G, C, C, A, T, A, A. And then we get into the blue adapter, which reads C, C, T, A, A, C, three prime end. And then, similarly over here, we have not the complement, these are not double-stranded, but just a separate strand that's running now the other direction. And so it goes, um, we've got T, T, A, T, G, G, C, A, T. And then we're into the purple adapter, which reads T, G, A, T, T, T. Three prime in. Now, I'm going to take a quick photo of this so that we have a slightly higher resolution image to go with this. All right, so where we are now is we've got, we've done, uh, we copied so that we got an anchored version of the complement of what landed. Then we did one round of bridge amplification, and so now we have each direction. Now, notice, one strand from this original RNA landed here, and one strand landed here. But, even though they were different strands, complementary but different, that landed in each spot, we now have, um, the, if, if, if we look at these, and if you look at the picture that I took, which I'll, I'll put a link to as well, um, if we look at these closely, what you will see is that actually we have two strands and this small little cluster of two strands and this small little cluster of two strands are indistinguishable. So even though one strand landed here and the other one landed here, we've now got each direction anchored to the chip. And you should, if, yeah, I'm not going to do the sort of erasing move around, but if this, this strand on the right here flopped over, it would complement this, and then we could bridge amplify. And this strand could complement, could, could flop over, complement the purple, bridge amplify. 
Same thing over here. This strand could complement the blue, bridge amplify, complement this way, bridge amplify, and after the bridge amplification, if we denature again so everything floats free, what we're going to get is now two copies of each strand. So this will have something that is exactly the same as the purple anchored one here, A, T, G, C, C, A, T, A, A, um, and then uh, and then purple. Great, my blue's dying on me. That's wonderful. Um, C C T A A C, um, and then uh, this one here, same thing. Uh, a T G C C A T A A uh, and then C C T A A C three prime end um, and then over here we will get another copy of the blue of the blue anchored version T T A T G G C A T and then our Purple still has some juice left in it. T, G, A, T, 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 three prime in. Uh, oh, and then once more over here. Um, so after two rounds of bridge amplification, I now have two copies of every, of each strand, and I can't even tell anymore which strand from that double-stranded initial thing landed here versus here. Okay. Now imagine, I'm not going to draw it out, but imagine that in each spot here there's actually many thousands of anchored adapters, and so we do not just a couple rounds of bridge amplification, but um, uh, not just like two rounds of bridge amplification, but 15 rounds of bridge amplification. And so then we end up with two to the 15th fragments in each cluster. They're still spatially separated, so we can, when we image them, we can see different things. Um, and then, so we've got this whole mix here. Then we're going to, now we're finally ready to sequence. And so, but before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to, these blue, blue adapters have a little chemical weakness right there at that junction point. So we're going to take advantage of that chemical weakness and now really wash away. So I'm not erasing these because they're moving like I was a minute ago, but instead I'm erasing these because they're washing away. So the, everything on the blue side gets washed away. Every blue anchored bit gets washed away. Then we're going to add the complement of the blue as a primer over here. So uh, five prime end, G, T, T, A, G, G. And then, um, and then this is going to, and so that that's complement of the blue is going to anneal everywhere. G, T, T, A, G, G. Um, G, T, T, A, G, G. Um, G, T, T, A, G, G. All right, so, there. Um, now we're going to sequence. And so what happens is, a T gets added here. A T gets added here to complement the A. A T gets added here. And a T gets added here. Now it's got that little chemical terminator group on there, so only one base gets added, and this T happens to, all the T's have red tags on them. So, I didn't draw it red, but this T glows red. And so, when we then take a picture, this cluster flashes red, and this cluster flashes red. Another cluster might have a different thing that complements after the blue primer, and so, something else will get added. Then we cut off, chemically cut off, our red fluorescent piece of the molecule, 
and remove the chemically remove the um, the terminator bit, the little nitrogen, three nitrogens that prevent uh, the next nucleotide from being added. So now our polymerase can add another one. And it adds another T, and it adds another T, and over here at this cluster it adds another T, and it adds another T, and of course it's not just two molecules per cluster, but a few thousand molecules per cluster. And another T gets added, and it's red, and it's the only thing that's added, and so we take another picture, and these clusters are red again. Then we do our chemistry, remove the fluorophore, and now an A gets added because it complements the T, and A gets added because it complements the T, and so on. And so in both of these clusters, green A's have been added. And so now we take a picture and both of our clusters glow green. And then we go all the way through and keep sequencing until we get as far as we can, um, or until we just get to the end. Then we denature. Away floats this sequence down the drain and into the sewer goes um, our thing, but still attached covalently are these strands. Do another round of bridge amplification, and so then after we do another round of bridge amplification, we get back the other direction. And so, let me make sure that I get this right. This other direction, red T, T, it's not complementary, it's reverse complementary. So because A, A, then, then this, because it bridged over. So we're imagining that it bridged over. G, G, C, T, A. Um, T, T, A, T, G, G, C, T, A. Um, so again, it was made, we're, this was made by bridging over and then co copying back that away over toward this. So that's why we copied first into the, the um, black bit and then the last bit that we copy is the complement of our tethered adapter. So, which the complement of our tethered adapter is going to be T, G, uh, A, T, 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 G, A, T, T, T. Oh, I forgot what I was doing here. So we have uh, T is the first, the, the complement of our sequence. T, G, G, C, T, A, T, T, A. T, G, G, C, T, A. And again, so even though I've drawn these near each other, these are not double-stranded fragments. They were double-stranded during the bridge amplification, but then after bridge amplification is over, I'm going to denature it so that they all turn into free-floating, single-stranded bits of DNA still tethered just at one end. All right, now there is a slightly different chemical weakness at the end of our purple primer, at the end of the purple adapter, than the different than the chemical weakness at the at the end of our blue adapter. So we take advantage of the chemical weakness at the end of the purple primer, and we cut everything that is tethered to a purple primer. So shoop, this floats away, down the drain, gone forever. 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 And now we add in the primer that we're going to use to attach to this sequence. We add in primers to sequence A, 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 T, C, A. Uh, oops, three prime in. Um, A, 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 T, C, A, 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 T, C, A. So we add in our primers, and then we start sequencing this way. And so we get Oh, a T gets added again. I like T's apparently. 
So a t is the first thing that gets added. A t is the first thing that gets added. A t is the first thing that gets added. And then, and, and then we, and then, so then we take a picture, we see that it's red, because t's are red. We take a picture, we see this cluster's red, that cluster's red, the red clusters. It's cool, we're excited, we've got a t. Take off the chemical terminators, take off the fluorophores, now at each of the thousand fragments at this cluster, an A gets added, at each of the thousand fragments at this cluster, an A gets added, and then the A's glow, whatever color I said A's were yellow or whatever. And then we take off the terminator, take off the floor, the yellow fluorophore for the A, and then a G gets added because it complements a C in our sequence. So G gets added here, a G gets added to each of the molecules here, and the G's glow orange or whatever color G is, and we take a picture, this cluster's orange, that cluster's orange, great, we're getting more sequencing data. And we keep sequencing down until we get to the end. And so now we have sequenced in each cluster forward and reverse. Okay. So, so everyone take a breath here, pause the video if you need to. We're gonna, things are gonna get more difficult after this. So we've sequenced this. Now, Let's imagine, let's start, let's back ourselves up to this point in time. And let's back ourselves up to before we're washing things on. Or maybe let's imagine another spot on our chip, whatever we want to do. And so this phosphofructokinase, there was some RNA from that. It got broken apart at random places, though. Um, and so we have this double-stranded bit, and maybe the blue end of this double-stranded bit lands on another spot. So we've got this other spot here where the blue end of this double-stranded bit lands. And so the blue end of this double-stranded bit has landed here, and it reads C A A T C C. And then we've got some unknown sequence from this 300 base fragment, 300 bases long. And then we've got some purple adapter. And then it bridges over, it gets copied. And so, um, and then after bridging over and copying, we're gonna denature. This thing, this thing floats away down the drain just like we did before. I'm not gonna draw it in as much detail this time. And then we've got a tethered bit of the complement of whatever landed, still 300 bases long of unknown sequence. And then it's got a bit of blue adapter on the end of it, blue adapter sequence. And then it bridges back, maybe to the same thing, maybe to another one. And then it's going to get copied, and we're going to have 300 bases going the other direction and some purple adapter. And then those bridge over and we get a bunch of stuff. And so at this spot, one of the fragments from this top molecule landed. Meanwhile, over at this spot, um, one of the fragments from this bottom molecule landed. So maybe it complements here, T, 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 A, G, T. Um, it's not so the initial thing that, that, that anneals, that, that hydrogen bonds, is not covalently attached. Here we've got some 250 bases of sequence that we don't know yet, and then the blue adapter that was over here. It bridges over, complements the, no, sorry, doesn't bridge over, complements this. First, we copy. Copy, including copying the blue. Then, wash away the thing that initially hydrogen bond. Now we've got a tethered, covalently attached bit from this 250 base template. Then it bridges over, and then after the bridging and the, and the amplification, we've got the 250 bases, 250 bases of unknown sequence, like this, and then we do a few more rounds of bridge amplification, 
and we've got, again, just like before, I'm going to draw four, but really there are a few thousand um, of each of these fragments at each cluster. But now, notice, these are from the same RNA, two different copies of the same RNA is what gave rise to these initially. They only have a little bit of overlap with each other. But, um, but this, they, they have different sequences because they're from different parts of the same RNA. So, then we do some of our chemistry magic and cut, cut away and wash away everything attached to blue. Away it goes, away it goes, away it goes, and away it goes. And then we put on the primer that complements blue, that hydrogen bonds, and then we start adding bases. And so maybe the first base that gets added over here is an A. At every one of the molecules on this cluster, the first base that gets added is an A, and I forget what color A's are. A's are, uh, I don't know, A's are um, pink. So this, 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 um, this cluster flashes pink. Meanwhile, over here, since this is a different part of the sequence from that same RNA, maybe the first thing gets added is a G. And G's are green, or whatever. And so this cluster flashes green. Then we remove the fluorophore, we remove the terminator, and then maybe over here a C gets added, and a C gets added. And then over here, maybe a C gets added, and a C gets added. And so now, C's are blue, let's say, so this one flashes blue, this one, this frag, this cluster also happens to flash blue. That doesn't mean they're the same thing, they just have a C in the spot number two. Wash away the fluorophore, wash, or, or cut away the fluorophore, cut away the fluorophore, add the next base, maybe the next base over here is a T, um, and then the next base over here is an A. And so A's flash pink, so this, this cluster flashes pink, T's flash purple, so this cluster flashes purple, and we know that the next letter in this cluster is a T, and the next letter in this cluster is, a, is an A. Now this thing is 300 bases long, so we only get about 200 bases in, so we get sequence, this is 300 bases long, but we only learn the sequence we only learn 200 bases of that sequence. This one's 250 bases long. We do a little bit better. We get nearly to the end, but we only get, we only get um, 200 out of the 250. Before, after that point, our um, signal to noise ratio has gotten too bad. So, so we've learned, okay, this cluster, we've learned 200 bases worth. We don't actually know how much is left. We just know 200 bases of it. This one's here, and then we we've learned. We also we know we've got 200 bases, but we're not sure how much is how much is left that we haven't sequenced. There could be a thousand bases left that we haven't sequenced. We have no idea. Um, but then, denature. So all of this stuff that we've been using to sequence washes away, runs down the drain. Then, bridge amplifies. And so after bridge amplification, we're going to get the complement of 250 bases, complement of 250 bases with purple sequence attached. Complement of 300 bases, complement of 300 bases with purple sequence attached. Then we take advantage of the magic chemistry that cuts purple and cut Cut, 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 and wash away down the drain. And so now, we start sequencing. Okay, and then now we put in the complement of the purple primer. Choo, 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 choo. And we start sequencing down this way, one nucleotide at a time, 
sequencing down these one nucleotide at a time. So first, maybe, maybe the first thing that happens is an A and an A and a T and a T. So we get a certain color. Then we go one base further and we get a G and a G and another A and another A. And so we get colors and we know those. And then we go one base further and we get a T and a T and a C and a C. So we figure out these things. And then we go one base further and we get an A and an A and another A and another A. And so these happen to flash the same color, but that's not because they're the same sequence. It's just that we hit an A at the fourth position on both of them. They flash the same color and we keep going. And then we get 200 bases into this 250. And then we look back and we're like, wait a minute, on that cluster, 150 bases that we got in one direction is exactly the complement of 150 bases we get in this way. So what's probably happening is we have a 250 base long fragment and we just sequenced into that same overlapping region. Here we've got 200 bases going one direction, 200 bases going the other, but 100 bases at either end complement each other. And so that must, so we can figure out the sequence of the full 300 bases. If our fragment is more than 400 bases long, then we are not going to get the sequence of the full fragment because we're going to have some unknown in the middle. Depending on what reference genome we've got and how we're aligning things, we may or may not be able to somewhat clarify what's going on, but we're still going to have some uncertainty about what's going on here. Um, but in this case, we're able to figure all this business out. Alright, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, stop the video, take a breath, make sure that this all makes sense, because we're going to throw in one more weird case here. Okay. Let's imagine now, let's just go, let's just go think about one cluster. Here. So we've got one spot here. And let's say that by bad luck, or just, you know, because there's so many RNA fragments, what happens is the bottom strand of the sodium potassium ATPase gene lands hydrogen bonds here. T, 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 A, G, T. And then it continues on up. Um, T, A, C, G, G, T, A, T, T. And then we keep going and we get G, G, A, T, T, G. There's our three prime end. Let's go ahead and draw the backbone for fun here. So this, this hydrogen bonds here, but then right next to it, like 10 nanometers away, the um, top strand of this 250 base long piece here lands right here. So if that happens, then we get to the top strand is um, C, A, A, T, C, C, and then um, some 250 base long monstrosity of a sequence here that I'm definitely not going to draw. And then we've got our blue adapter, G, G, no. no. Then we've got a purple adapter. Then we've got, at the end of this, we've got our purple adapter, and our purple adapter on this direction reads A, C, T, A, A, A. Okay, so, so far nothing's covalently attached to our chip, so we um, copy. So this goes 
A T G C C A T A A um, C C T A A C and then um, this one is some monstrosity of a sequence. So here, this is one double-stranded, here's another double-stranded, some monstrosity of 200 base long sequence that I'm not gonna write out. And then up here we've got T, G, A, uh, T, T, T. Okay. Then we wash away the non-covalently attached bits. So we wash away the non-covalently attached bits. Now we have right next to each other two sequences. Then we let them bridge amplify. And there's more than this around, so we end up with a bunch of copies of each. But for now, I'm not going to draw, and then we're going to, so we end up with a bunch of copies of each. So I'm just going to draw one copy of each that we're going to end up with. So one copy of each that we're going to end up with. This will first bridge over and complement this. Then 250 bases of the RNA sequence comes in. And then at the last bit of the bridge amplification, we're going to get C, C, T, A, A, C. And this one bridges over, complements that. You can sort of see, verify, check for yourself that it does complement it when it bridges over. And then during the bridge amplification, it makes a little bridge, makes a little upside down U shape. But then afterwards, it's going to straighten back out. And what we're going to have is, a, uh, is T, T, A, T, G, G, A, T. And then purple primer, which reads T, G, A, T, T, T. All right, so we've got, again, two sequences happening right on top of each other at this cluster. And then do a bunch of bridge amplification. So now we've got a, couple, a few thousand copies of each of these different sequences that are not, you've got complementary, but also the different sequences. Then we are going to cut away all of the blue tethered bits and start sequencing. We still don't know that this, that this cluster is a problem for us. We just did the bridge amplification. We don't know what's there yet. We haven't started sequencing. Um, okay, but then now we finally go to sequence and now we're going to see what the problem is. So we add a primer, primer, I prime in, G, T, T, A, G, G. Primer here, if I prime end of it, is G, T, T, A, G, G. So far everything's fine. Then we go to add our first base. And so there's a T, so there's an A there, so a T complements. T flashes, I don't remember what color I said, T flashes pink. Then over here, maybe there is a C, so a G gets added there. And so this G flashes green. And remember, there's not just one copy of each of these. There's a few thousand copies of this sequence right on top of a few thousand copies of this sequence. And so this thing glows a mix of pink and green. And that looks, and so we're like, I don't know what the heck's going on. We've got a cluster that has got two colors in it. Something weird has happened. But we let the, but the, the sequence reaction happens fairly automatically, so we just just kind of keeps going. Maybe there's an A here, so a T gets added, we remove the color, we let the one more base get added, and then we get a pink T and a pink T. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next picture. It's like, oh, okay, well, so this thing, nice, clear pink signal. Maybe that first base, something weird happened, but, you know, we've got just, um, you know, we've got a clear pink signal. So, okay, then we remove our fluorophore, we let one more base, so an A complements here, um, A's are, I guess, I don't remember what it said, red, and then maybe there's another C here, and so we've got a G, and so this now this now this thing flashes a mix of red and green. And we're like, okay, you know, something definitely is weird is going on here, and then maybe the next thing in our sequence here is a T, so an A gets added, 
The next thing over here is an A, so a T gets added, so this, color, this thing flashes a mix of colors. And approximately one in four times, we get a clear signal out of this because randomly one in four times it happens that it's the same based on both fragments, but three out of four times we get a mixed signal, and this cluster is completely useless. It's like a Sanger sequencing reaction where we have two different templates in there. We're just going to get a bunch of completely ambiguous data, and we're not sure, because the signals are all on top of each other, we're not even able to figure out which one signal corresponds to one sequence and another to another. It is just useless data. We throw this cluster out and ignore it, and pay attention to the other 990 million clusters on our chip that did not have the unfortunate bad luck of having two, RNA, of two, of two strands of DNA landing right next to each other. Okay, so we've gone through what happens when a few fragments land and worked in detail through bridge amplification and the sequencing of a short sequence, including looking at when two different strands land in different places. We then discussed what happens when two different sequences that are very long land in different places, how overlap within each sequence in each direction can be used to help you figure out that sequence, and then how overlap potentially between those two sequences can help you identify that they came from the same mRNA that was just broken at different points. Then we went through what happens when there are two strands of single-strand DNA that land right next to each other, and why that leads to a useless bit of data. I hope that all of that has been helpful, and yeah, I will see you all in class.